Yeah, just a short update. Like, if you have uh, watched the program, you would see like Pankaj Singh and Utkarsh Sharma speaking. And unfortunately, I'm not Utkarsh. I'm another Pankaj covering on behalf of Utkarsh because his visa did not arrive on time, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, how many of your Airflow users like have been actually using Airflow and struggling with performance issues? Yeah, I think most of us. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the title is. Pretty vague. There are quite a few talks happening here. They are going to talk about optimizing your Airflow performance. We decided that we will try to not cover the topics that are getting covered in other talks. So in this talk, probably we are going to speak more about optimizing the Airflow database performance, things you could do to optimize your database with respect to Airflow. So I think Pankaj is going to speak now, Pankaj Singh. OK, so what is in the menu? So first, uh, we'll discuss some DAG authoring best practice, mostly related to performance. And then the second part of the talk will be related to database optimization. And we'll cover various aspects of database in terms of like Airflow. So we had like one experiment for our deployment. We'll just walk through that deployment. And just keep in mind, for our exercise, we were using the Postgres as a database backend. OK. so. In Airflow Survey 2023, uh, there was two questions which were asked for the user. Like which feature user use from Airflow? The topmost answer, if you see, is the Taskflow API. The second question is from like uh, how people interface from your DAG, like, and the answer was Python operator. So if you see like the both answer, so it gives us a sense that like many users to make their uh, use cases, they write lots of like uh, Python code in their DAG file. And that like give a opportunity and also risk to the like DAG author to optimize or de-optimize their Airflow DAG. So I'll discuss basically four use cases. Uh, three use cases you can say uh, and one uh, like detection uh, uh, tactic like how you can basically uh, handle the expensive call in your DAG and uh, how you can uh, like import the heavy library, what should be the like uh, right way. And also what benefit you can take from the Jinja template. And most important, like uh, how you can detect the top level code in your DAG. Because the if you see, like m most of the time we, we get like question, like DAG parsing is taking lots of time. So how you can handle that part. So here is one example from like top level import. So if you see in line number 11, we are uh, like uh, making a call to the expensive API call functions. And since this call is top level, so whenever like uh, Airflow try to parse the DAG, it will always call expensive uh, call, expensive API call functions. And if you see, I mean, I have also posted the uh, the time, the DAG parsing time. So it will take around the seven, seven seconds. On the other hand, if you see, we just like moving that expensive call inside the task flow API, and the time is reducing to two seconds, so which is significant. And if you talk about a scale, this is very important. Another example like top level import. This is very trivial case when we make a mistake. Here you can see like two library we are importing. One is pandas, another is Tosh on the top of a tag. The optimized part is like importing it not on the top level, but inside the inside the task flow API. And even if you see, since I mean this uh, DAG is very small, but still we have like almost 40% less time in the DAG parsing. Another example is like let's say in this DAG, I am trying to basically access uh, Airflow variables for my use cases. But uh, the in the first DAG, you can see like it. It is again like top level variable access. So it will always try to make a call to Airflow DB. So there will be SQL statement executions there. And it is going to be slow. Although in, in the time I basically try to get the parsing time, you can't see like significant difference from left to right. But in the actual cases, uh, this difference will increase if you, your like number of variable access will increase. So you can see right hand side there is a weird syntax we call it like Jinja template to access it. Uh, so as Pankaj Koti mentioned earlier, like since we have already like other talks which is covering uh, the 
many way to optimize the airflow DAG and other configuration. We'll not cover that, and we'll discuss the another topic like uh, how we can optimize the database part of airflow. Uh, sorry, there is one slide more like how you can detect it. So, so there are basically two techniques. One is like you can just make it, since your DAG file is Python, you can just call uh, Python and your DAG file name. So and put some print statement where you think like your call will be expensive. Uh, so so you, you can get uh, some idea from that, like uh, it is executing your expensive call or not. The another is like using the Unix uh, time command, so you can just put time and you can get some estimated time of, of like how much your DAG parsing will take. So on the database optimizations part, so Airflow already does many things. So for example, if you see the Airflow metadata, it has somewhere around like 80 to 100 index that's help us to improve the performance query. And this is very critical when we have like large database, Airflow database, and we are running Airflow on a scale. Uh, this worked fine for thousands of people. But uh, we had one deployment, which we are also working fine. But after certain number, certain size of database, we started getting some performance degradation issues. And if I try to like put it into Word, like we had like ma major like three issues. First was like disk consumptions were very high, and the other one was the slow query, and there was a side effect of it was the scheduler for uh, failure. So for example, if you can see like we had one TI table that we are taking around 4.7 GB of a space, but the corresponding index were 20 GB, which is almost around 4x, and this is just one index, and we have 80 more. So another was uh, like slow query is, is just like another side effect and the CWL liveness failure. So since our disk space usage were very high, we started investigating like where this uh, disk usage is going on. The culprit was like unused indexes. But uh, I mean there is challenges involved like how we can find what we can do with these indexes. So, uh, so first like challenge is index use, like how we are using it. So this can change over time based on our use cases. Let's say I'm using uh, some feature of Airflow and it using to using some index, but maybe my use cases change and I'm not using tomorrow. So th this is dynamic and changing over time. Other is like dynamic use cases. Let's say it's a depend on like if I'm a company providing services or I am a user and many times using my services. So again, like based on what service we are using or other team is using, this index are not like a statics. This usage of this index is very dynamic. So not easy to predict like uh, like what we can keep and what we should not. Another challenge which is like not easy to avoid, like version related, Airflow version. Because Airflow like add a new index and can delete in some coming like uh, releases. So if you are dealing with uh, Airflow database index, you need to deal with it also. Here you can see like one example query uh, that we used. So what it query is doing is it basically is scanning a PG state user indexes, and it, it is trying to get the size of indexes. Uh, and it uh, in in this particular like query, we are getting the index uh, for the. Uh, the one which is like not recently scanned and not unique. But you can tweak it a little bit to get data based on for like your use cases. So uh, from this query, we get some data like this one. Uh, you can see like we have a index last scheduling decisions. Uh, on 12th for 2024, we did experiment and the size of index was 5047. And it gradually like increasing with time, but on the other column, uh, other row, if you see like the number of scan, it is zero zero zero. So what does it mean? Is like this index was not used in past. It was not used on 12th of April, and it was not used even on 17th or between. Another example, if you see like the uh, log DAG index. So again, like index size is gradually increasing, uh, but the a scan number, if you see 666, which means that, I mean, before 12, for 2024, it was used, 
but at least from 12/4/2024 it has not been used so from this number we come to conclusion that okay uh, like we have uh, we are confident enough to basically delete uh, one index uh, last scheduling decision from diagram table and we contributed it into apache airflow in version 290 and like there was one potential candidate uh, log dag because even in the example you can see it was it was used in the past but at least for the couple of time in the history it has not been used but uh, still there was risk involved so we didn't uh, delete it what was impact of this deletion so just by removing one index in our cases we were able to save 5 gb of disk space so just imagine like if uh, uh, in your huge cases you can delete more indexes it it will be massive improvement and because of this our our basically performance of write query improved uh, significantly and another impact of this was like uh, uh, we gain like acceptable performance improvement and we prevent our dag uh, scheduler failure so whatever i discussed so far for example like query executions and other part those were like mostly manual and limited data we had but there are tool which you can use to basically automate it and get data for the longer run and that will help you to make a better decision so there is a tool called pg exporter and on the right side of the screen you can see some configuration which you can use to export data into Prometheus, and maybe you can make a better decision out of it. Uh, so that's uh, on the like unused indexes. Now I'll hand over to Pankaj Koti to discuss other part. Yes, thanks, Pankaj. Uh, yeah, so quick recap. Recap. So far, we have covered like some best practices around DAG writing. We covered unused indexes. So indexes, if they are not getting used, they occupy space, and then eventually cause high resource utilization, especially CPU, and sometimes often, mem often memory because the indexes are getting loaded into memory. The next part we are going to cover is uh, two points still to cover in the database. One is the missing indexes, and the other part is bloats, uh, table and index bloats, uh, how to get rid of them. So we just saw like uh, unused indexes taking disk space, but there are often cases that adding few indexes might actually optimize your database performance. So why why did we look into this uh, identifying slow query? This is what we are, uh, often see, like when there are a lot of number of DAGs getting created, often the home page, the DAGs list page gets slow. There are some other pages also that get slow. So that led us to investigate into this matter. Then our astronomer support team, uh, they also have these dashboards where they keep on monitoring CPU utilization. So they saw like some databases were seeing high CPU utilization. So they, what they do is like whenever they see like some instances saying uh, high CPU utilization, they go and delete stale metadata that may not be required. So for the past historical data, they tried on one deployment to delete about a week's data and it took like almost seven minutes. They wanted to delete about a year's data, and like if we calculate the numbers, it would have taken them almost six hours. So that is when we looked into slow queries. Like the slow queries also have the additional side effect, like the CPU utilization we already talked about. The second is like you will see like your pages being loaded slow. That's the impact. How to identify slow queries? So uh, with Postgres, I'm going to cover specifically for Postgres, but based on your database, MySQL, MSQL, you'll have similar alternatives. With Postgres, there comes a built-in PG stat statements extension. It's not enabled by default, you'll have to enable it. So you'll have to uh, preload the library and then create this extension. And with this query here, you can try to find like which query is taking maximum like large mean time. So this is an important parameter. It will also give you the query. These are the parameters like how many times the query was called, minimum time it took, maximum time it took, and the total time it took across the calls. And we are ordering this by mean time. So we have a small snippet of how the query results would look like. Next slide, please. So this is it, like, so it says like the mean time it took is like 1.65, for example. So uh, we don't have real customer data, uh, like we don't have this result for real deployment right now, but this is how the result would appear. And then you could look, look and go into optimizing these queries, for example. Probably you need to add indexes on these queries, the columns that are getting queried in the where clause and all. So this is what we did, like uh, deleting the stale metadata, right? So we tried to delete about a week's data DAG and then DAG has the referential 
foreign keys into other tables like DAC tag, data set schedule, data set difference. And what we observed is, unlike what we, like, for me it was uh, something new, like in university I learned like on foreign keys indexes are created by default, which is true in the case of MySQL, but PostgreSQL, SQLite, they don't create indexes on foreign keys by default. So that was something new for me, and then what we did is we created indexes on the, on the DAG ID column in the other tables that were referencing DAG ID. And that helped us massively. We also contributed this back to Airflow in 2.10 with this PR. And then, so yeah, so this, this, this was the impact of index analysis. Like what we see here is like the time that it was going to take like about six hours for the one year's worth of data, it was reduced to just 36 seconds. So this was one use case while we're adding the index on the DAG ID column alone on the referencing table cell plus. In your case, you might have other use cases where you need to add, add in, uh, indexes on the foreign keys, and that could help you. So essentially, you just have to run the slow query identifier query and then add indexes on that. There's some future work in world, like the DAG list page, like it's still not optimized, but with Airflow 3, what we are going to do is we are going to break the home page into multiple components. That's going to make parallel queries to the database, and then it will execute concurrent queries and that would essentially uh, improve the home page load. So that's about slow, uh, missing indexes, adding missing indexes. The next one is table and index bloats. So we're going to discuss here uh, the causes, detection, and mitigation strategies. Uh, so what are database bloats uh, essentially? So, so database bloats is essentially, uh, so if you observe or know like with Postgres uh, specifically like, Whatever you write into the database is actually an array, array of pages. So any data that you insert, update, delete, so it's being maintained into an array of pages. So essentially what happens is when you are updating your records, let's say consider a simple use case like where you have a bunch of user data. So you are creating new users. So there would be one row for a user and then let's say with time we update their personal details or something like that specific user data would get updated. So what essentially happens is in that array of pages, like where it was previously written, that record remains as it is just marked as stale, it's not removed, and then you append the new updated data to the new page, like wherever it's finishing, like at the current pointer. So those are basically bloats. So table bloats are like when you update and delete, so the row that creates. And along with table bloats, so since you would have indexes on those columns, the indexes would also get bloated because of the updates and deletes. So yeah, both of them would cause like uh, degrade degrade the performance. Causes of table bloats like like I said like frequent updates and deletes and if the auto vacuum is not configured, which take case of removing the table bloats as well as index bloats. If that is missing, that would definitely do table bloats. If auto vacuum is disabled, if you fail to manually vacuum periodically uh, or analyze the database, that is another reason. And then one one of the causes is like sometimes you allocate more space. For a column, for example, you specify like for a character, you would reserve 50 uh, characters for one column, but not always you would fill all those 50 characters. Can't do much over there, but that could also cause a bloat. Uh, next one, please. So this is how it would like consider this as an array of pages. Credits to this blog, I think this is this is this one is a really nice article. This helped me a lot. So probably you will also like to take a picture of this. Like this is how you would clear bloats and tables. A quick visual view of how bloats could be deleted and this is how you'll see. Like you have table bloats similarly, like as and when the data is updated, indexes also would get bloated. They are not automatically shrinked. Poor index management, of course, as it says. I just need to rush a bit, I think. Time over here. Next slide, please. This is similar, like indexes are represented as B tree. Like B tree is like, this leaf is stale, but can't do anything like a new leaf node would be added. After clearing the bloats, this is how you'll see it clean. Same blog, credits to this blog. And then impact is, of course, like uh, performance degradation, increased storage cost, like in the case of unused disks, what we had, we were seeing like unused uh, space, similar with the bloats. If you have backups and restores in place, that is also going to take significantly longer if you have this table and index bloats. Next one is to mitigate. So there are some tools for detecting Table bloat, so these are the tools uh, for MySQL, and then one one indicator, like this is a manual indicator, like like I said, there's only one user profile, but you would see like it's getting updated uh, frequently, and your database size, table size, index size is growing, not proportionally, but more exponentially, because of the frequent updates on the same user profile. 
So how to mitigate the table bloat? So this is like you could recreate the table because the previous pages were bloated. But this is going to be a challenge because you'll have to copy the old data. At the same time, you'll also have to manage the live data that is getting populated. Next is, uh, if you don't have vacuum, auto vacuum setup, you could run vacuum full periodically. This will not block the entire database, but it will log the page briefly. But yeah, then it will be released. The good way that we found is using PG repack. So this is an extension again that comes with Postgres. It's not enabled, enabled by default. You can enable it and then just running this command. So what it does is like it will copy all the existing data to the new table and then also be responsible for copying the new data that is coming in the old table into the new table and then it will slap, uh, swap the new one with the old one and the old one will be deleted. So this is seamless is what I could recommend it. Uh, mitigating index bloat, so there is a very nice query. I would suggest like take a picture of this uh, and then if you run just this query, it will give you a list of indexes that have bloats in your database. And the solution is simple. The bloats, the bloated indexes that you carry, you just need to run this command, reindex index, index name. So depending on the size of data you have, like you won't, it won't have a downtime on the database, but your write queries or read queries might be affected, affected for a while. So that's it. I'm just going to, so this, this is a huge query I can't show here, but once you run that, you'll have something like this. This is from a live deployment that we saw, and the bloats are humongous, like 8, 8 GB of real data, and also the bloat size is 8 GB. So like if you add up this, like it's almost 40 GB of wasted space. This I just discovered last week while I was working on the talk, so probably something new. And like this space you can get rid away of if you just call reindex index and those indexes. Now here comes the caveat. Like all this work that you do, uh, you're actually updating the Airflow database, metadatabase, and then Airflow actually expects your database to be unaltered. But if you know what you're doing, for example, if you delete one index and later on Airflow also tries to delete that in a new version, so it will have a conflict. So you need to deal with that by creating the index again and deleting. Yeah, something like this. So you can do this if you know what you're doing, and then you, you will not be blocked while upgrading. 